Good morning, good morning, good morning. We greet you this morning in the name that is above every name. We greet you in the name of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And that name is sweet to us, we know. Amen. So on this morning, we bless the wonderful name of Jesus because of how Jesus has so wonderfully blessed us. If the Lord has been good to you, why don't you give him some praise right where you are today. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 138. Psalms 138. The psalmist begins by saying, I will praise you with my whole heart. Amen. And he just starts off right there. He says, I will praise you with my whole heart. He says, I will praise you for two particular reasons in Psalms 138. I will praise you, number one, because you've kept your word to me. Amen. If you're glad that God has been a keeper of his word, a keeper of his promises, you are to praise the Lord today. Amen. He said, I will not only praise you because you've been a keeper of your word. I'm praising you because I know you're keeping me right now. He says in verse 27, I'm going through the midst of some things, but while I'm going through, I'm still going to praise you because while I'm going through, I know it's you that is carrying me through. So no matter what's going on with you today, you ought to give God some praise. Amen. Whether you've been through something, God carries you through it. Whether you're going through it, he's carrying you through it. And if you come to it, he he will carry you through it. So let's praise the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Join me now in a word of prayer here on today. God, how we thank you for being a God who is a keeper of his word. Thank you. You've been true to your word. You've kept your word, and your word has kept us. So thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, not only for keeping your word, but thank you, Lord, for keeping us. You kept us through another week to allow us to assemble for worship once again. You kept us through this pandemic period. You kept us, God, like nobody else can. So, God, in the midst of right now, we still praise you and we worship you because we know that it is you that is keeping us. Amen. So, God, we ask right now that you will remove anything from our hearts and our minds, both in this sanctuary space as well as in our virtual space that will keep us from hearing from you, that will keep us from looking, lifting up our holy hands to you, to remove whatever will keep us from going closer with you in the, uh, through the midst of this worship experience. So fill us fresh with your spirit. That we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory right now. We love you. Bless now in Jesus' name we pray this day. Amen and amen, amen. God bless you this morning. And again, we welcome all of our First African Baptist Church members and friends alike that is out there worshiping with us today. To God be the glory. We encourage you to please stay tuned as we begin to uh, share with you information about our plans to return to in-person worship. Uh, again, we, we, we ask you please stay tuned. You'll be hearing more about that uh, in the upcoming days. Amen. Uh, there got several announcements for you today. I want you to keep in mind, amen. Number one, I want to announce to you again, some of you already heard it, you've seen it, uh, communicated via our Facebook page and on our website, but I want to reiterate once again uh, that our church is participating with, uh, with the University of Kentucky College of Nursing Research Program called Fit and Faithful, amen, and it's based upon a diabetes prevention program. The purpose of this program is to promote a lifestyle change that will help uh, that will help people lose weight as well as prevent diabetes. Amen. So we are participating with them and we encourage you to please sign up for this program. Spots are limited so you just sign up right away. You may be eligible for this program if you're 18 and older. Uh, if you live within driving distance of the church because of materials that you have to come to the church and pick up, and if you're not a diabetic and you're not seriously ill, meaning you're able to engage in physical exercise, all right? This is a 12-month program, a six-month program, excuse me, for the first 12 weeks. You'll be part of an hour Zoom sessions, amen, and then following that every other week, uh, you'll be meeting via Zoom uh, for those sessions and those classes. So again, uh, we encourage you to please, 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 ma'am, please, sir, uh, sign up for this this healthy experience, amen, uh, there's been uh, a collaboration, uh, partnership with the University of Kentucky nursing program, again, called Fit and Faithful. If you're interested, go to our website, or for more information, you go to our website, you can see a video there, or on our Facebook page, you can get more information from there as well. And again, if you're interested for signing up, 
please contact the church. Amen. Contact the church. Um, we'll give you contact person information. Or on the flyer on Facebook, you can see others that you may contact uh, who is part, who is leading that effort for us. Sister Monique Gilliam. Gilliam. I'm Gilliam. And Sister Michelle Patton, Monique Avery, amen. <laughs> and, and Sister Michelle Patton, God bless you here on the day. Also, another one, announcement I want to share with you as well, amen. Uh, you know that the Black Faith Leaders of Lexington and Vicinity have been active in helping to engage and calling for justice in various areas in the city of Lexington. And on this coming Tuesday, amen, we want to invite all of you uh, to join us for a couple things on this coming Tuesday. We'll be having a, another one of our press briefings on Tuesday. Tuesday because on this coming Tuesday, uh, City Council will be taking a very important procedural vote as it counts to the uh, discontinued permanent ban and use of no-knock warrants. Amen. We've been calling for that. We're asking for that. So we're asking you to show up for justice and show up for no more no-knock warrants in Lexington at 10 a.m. at the Main Street Baptist Church, where we'll be having our press conference and we'll be also hand-delivering uh, our letters. Uh, to the mayor as well as the city council as to our continued advocacy and support for the discontinuation on, on the permanent ban, a discontinuation of the use of no-not warrants. We're seeking for a permanent ban of the use of that uh, of that mechanism. Amen. Uh, also then at 3 o'clock, we'll be having a watch party. Amen. We'll be having uh, a, a council meeting watch at the Shiloh Baptist Church. Amen. We'll be having tents. Amen. TV set up. We will gather together and watch watch how city council engages in this very important procedural vote. Amen. We want them to know that we are watching them. Amen. And that we're expecting for them to do what we believe is in the best interest of our community. Amen. So join us at 10 a.m. for the press conference at Main Street Baptist Church and then at 3 p.m. at the Shiloh Baptist Church this coming Tuesday, June the 8th. Show up for justice and let's show up for no more no-knock warrants in Lexington. Amen. Amen. Last thing I want to announce to you here on the day as we prepare to receive our praise uh, team here on the day is today is the first Sunday in June and I'm happy to announce the, um, the launching of FABC LEX Online. Amen. That is our online community, our Facebook group that we're launching here on today as a way of connecting, amen, on a daily basis uh, with our uh, FABC membership and friends to help us grow in our relationship with others and our relationship with God. So at the end of service today and concluding, we'll be sharing with you more information on how you can get connected with us through our new online platform, FABC LEX Online. God bless you here on today as we strive to reach the community, amen, with the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. God bless you here on today. Come on and receive this praise team as we praise the name of the Lord. Amen.
by again Psalms 138. The psalmist declares, Amen. I will praise him. Amen. He made up his mind that no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to praise God. Amen. And to God be uh, the glory. So again, we thank God for our praise team for blessing us here on today. Amen. We also thank God for our video and audio ministry team and all that you are doing uh, to help us to do what we do week after week. So to God be uh, the glory. Amen. And thank God for you and all that you continue to do. Amen. To help us do what we do to strive to be the church in the community for the hearts of the community. Amen. Thank God to our health ministry uh, as well as our deacons who are here week after week. We thank God for all of you. Amen. We thank God for Again, our praise team for leading us in such a spiritual way here on today. Amen. And their, 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 their pre-Semonic selections fall right in line with the focus of the word today. Amen. And for somebody, I don't know who this is for. Maybe it's for me. I don't know. Amen. But uh, the Lord has, has brought this uh, text back to me on several occasions over the last few days. Amen. And so I believe we are where we are supposed to be here on today, uh, even as the Lord has blessed us reminded us through our praise team that there's no need to worry, no need to fret. Amen. Uh, Jesus, uh, he's there right there for you uh, to help and see you through. Amen. As I said, stay tuned for more information on our reconvening in-person worship, but even when we do so, we'll still be going online. Amen. We'll still be maintaining our online virtual experience week after week, and so we will continue to provide that service and that ministry uh, to our uh, to our virtual audience. Amen. Now join me today in Luke chapter number 12. Amen. Luke 12 verses 22 through 31. Luke chapter number 12 Verses 22 through 31 here on today, our place uh, for preaching here on today. Luke chapter number 12, amen. Luke 12, Luke 12, verses 22 through 31, amen. This will look familiar to many of us, amen, as we will see that our theme text for the year is part of today's text as well as we've been we've, we've spent some time here uh, earlier part earlier part of the year amen um, as part of our week of spiritual renewal but we're hanging out right here amen here on today the Lord has guided us to this particular text to reaffirm for us our uh, mission for the year or our theme for the year as well as to encourage us here on today uh, to, to, to disengage in some things that might be preventing us uh, from being used to the max uh, to the efforts of kingdom building. Luke chapter number 12, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, beginning at verse number 22, the word of God says, Then he, he being Jesus, said to his disciples, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Well, the King James says, take no thought for your life. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat, nor uh, about the body, what you will put on. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which one of you, by worrying, can add one cubic to his stature? Some it says one hour to his life. If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, which today, how they grow neither do they toil nor spin? And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you should eat or what you should drink, nor, have, nor be anxious or have an anxious mind. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. 31, but seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. 
Amen. Verse number 30, 22 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. But you will eat, nor for the body, or what you will put on. I want to use for a second this morning, why worry doesn't work. Amen. Why worry doesn't work. Amen. Uh, our theme for the year is found in Luke chapter 22, uh, verse 32a, which Luke 12, rather, verse 32a, uh, which says, 31a, rather, it says, but seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. And our theme for the year is seeking the kingdom of God in 2021. Amen. When you look at Luke chapter number 12, verses 22 through 31, you will discover that its context really begins in verse number 1 of Luke chapter number 12. Where in Luke chapter number 12, verse number 1, amen, we find Jesus engaging in a very significant kingdom-seeking agenda event. Amen. He is found, amen, spreading the word of God. One of the major uh, agenda items for us as kingdom seekers is that of reaching the masses with the word of God. Amen. I just wanted to throw that in this morning as part of today's context. Amen. Because that's one of the reasons why we are launching FABC LEX online. So we can position ourselves to reach the masses. Amen. Jesus, amen, and Luke chapter number 12, verse number 1, has positioned himself to minister to the multitudes. He has positioned himself to facilitate conversation, and he has positioned himself to do what verse number 4 calls teaching his friends. Amen. Jesus cared so much for the masses that he positioned himself, that he may facilitate conversation so he could help them to grow in their faith, and that's part of what we are required to do as seekers of the kingdom of God. As builders of the kingdom, we must continue to engage ourselves in the mission of making disciples for Jesus the Christ. Amen. So we make our way to verse number 22 of our text. Jesus seemed to suggest, amen, uh, that there, there are several things that can become a hindrance to us and our kingdom building efforts. Amen. There are some things that can be a hindrance to us as we strive to seek the kingdom of God. And one of those things is an activity called worry. Amen. So that's why in verse number 22, Jesus says, the Christ issues this command of do not worry. Amen. Take no thought for your life. Don't be anxious or don't, don't, don't develop anxiety over life because part of doing that will hinder your work as a disciple for Jesus the Christ. But nestled in these particular verses, amen, and in the context of Luke chapter number 12, 22 through 31, I find in them some things uh, pertaining to why worry doesn't work. Amen. It doesn't work, number one, in particular because uh, the master said don't do it and whatever Jesus says don't do is something the disciple should not do because he knows that it won't work for the disciple. Jesus will only tell us to do things that will benefit us and bless us not hinder us but beyond that there are some other things right here I see in the text as to the reason why worry does not work. Number one, worry does not work because worry becomes a distraction to you. Amen. Worry does not work because it becomes a distraction to you. Notice now in verse number 22, the text says, Then he, he being Jesus, said to his disciples, Therefore, amen, I say to you, do not worry. The therefore, the text is there for a reason. Amen. The therefore in the text connects us to a previous activity, amen, that caused Jesus to give the command of not to worry. Amen. And what in the command of not to worry, amen, was precipitated by an activity that occurred in verses 13 through 21. But literally in verses 13 through 21, 
21, there was an individual in the crowd that Jesus was teaching that interrupted Jesus' teaching session with a question that arose from his concern for materialistic possessions. And Jesus wanted his disciples to know that you don't want to become worried about the possessions or materialistic things because they will distract you. Amen. One of the things that will distract you from doing, it will distract you from hearing the word of God. Amen. When you are worried about the accumulation of materialistic prosperity and wealth, it can cause you to become distracted from hearing the word of God. Again, remember this, this, this activity, uh, this, this, this context begins in verse number one, works its way down. You have a private conversation or a little heart to heart comes in with the disciples and then you get to verse number four. He talks to the broader crowd who has gathered to hear a word and Jesus is ministering to some of their fears and some of their concerns and some of the things that will be coming but he was letting them know so they could be reassured that when those things happen that he had it all under control amen but when you are worried about amen possessions and materialism amen it can cause you to become distracted from hearing the word of God here is Jesus teaching them training them trying to give them something that will bless their lives and because of the worry of materialistic goods this man interrupts the teaching process just to focus on the accumulation of wealth and Jesus says brother disciples don't worry about the materialistic things of life because when you become consumed amen by the possessions of material things you will miss out on what God may be trying to tell you in the word of God one of the things that happens when we become worried about materialistic things, it can cause us to miss out on spending quality time with the word of God. It can distract you while you are worrying about uh, things, worrying about situation. Uh, it can take away from your time of sharing fellowship and communing with Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior in a time of fellowship with the word of God. Sometimes worry can take you away from the word of God. That's why he says in the text, take no thought. Do not worry. Don't let your desire for goods, amen, overtake the good things in life. And the good things sometimes comes from those areas and those periods when we spend quality time in the word of God. Jesus told the disciples, don't, 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 don't worry because worry doesn't work. What worry will do, worry, if you allow it to stay there long enough, worry will distract you from the word of God. It will also keep you from becoming rich toward God. Amen. Or to keep you from gaining favor with God. Follow, if you will, again, at the, the, the events leading up to the therefore in verse number 22, 13 through 21, that man asked Jesus a question. Uh, my, Jesus, tell my brother to defy the inheritance with me or to give me a fairer share of the inheritance. And Jesus basically said, man, why are you interrupting my teaching session? Who made me a judge over you? I'm trying to teach you. Amen. But your mind is on the possession of materialistic things. And he says, understand and know that life does not consist of the abundance of one's possessions. Then he told the parable, he said, there was a certain rich man whose ground uh, 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 gave forth plentiful and the man looked at his produce and declared, I've got a problem. I've got more crops than I do places to storm. So what I will do, I will tear down my barns. I will build bigger barns that I may store my goods and I may say to my soul, sit back, take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. And in the midst of the parable, uh, the parable Jesus has God coming to the man and saying, hey, look, your soul is required of you tonight. Amen. Anywhere you are getting ready to die, now that you're getting ready to die, who is going to get all this stuff that you have stored up? He says, that's a foolish man. Amen. And Jesus said, what also is foolish, in verse number 31, 21 rather, 
kingdom is he who lays up treasure on earth and is not rich toward God. When you become more worried or concerned about the accumulation of things, amen, than you are about doing the work of the Lord, you prevent yourself from becoming rich toward God, amen. He says you can mess up your favor with God by seeking after those things that feeds your flesh, amen. You can lose favor with God by not using your life to be a blessing for others, amen, on behalf of God. One of the ways that you secure the favor of God is you stay focused on doing the will of God. But when you become more concerned about creature comforts, prosperity, and materialistic things, it sidetracks you from what's more important. That is aligning yourself to the will of God where it does not work. Because worry distracts you. Worry can distract you from hearing the word of God. What's, that's, what's, that's what I love about this, about this particular passage is that Jesus was trying to give them some things that was going to help them grow and to deal with some things that was coming on the pike. And the man was not concerned because he was more concerned about possessions. Worry doesn't work. Because worry will distract you, cause you to uh, miss out on hearing the word of God, hearing what God may be trying to say to you, but also prevents you from becoming rich toward God. Can I tell you why it does that? Because the Greek word for the word worry, English word for the word worry in our text, has several meanings. I'm going to discuss another one in a minute, but one of the meanings, it means, it means to divide. Yeah. That's what happens when you when you make when you make things uh, a priority in your life over God. It will divide your allegiance to God and money. And Jesus is very clear. Uh, you cannot serve two masters. You, you cannot you, you cannot serve God and money. You can't chase after money and God is. That's why he says, seek the kingdom. Chase after the kingdom and God will supply all that you need. It will divide your allegiance. My brothers and my sisters, one of the reasons why worry doesn't work is that worry distracts you. Amen. But not only does worry become a distraction, but worry causes doubt within you. Amen. Notice Jesus says, amen. He says, don't worry uh, about what you're going to eat, about what you're going to put on. Those are the basic necessities of life. He says, don't worry about your needs being met in life. He said, God will take care of your needs. Amen. For there is more to life than food and clothing. And then he says, consider the ravens. Amen. They neither sow seed. They don't reap a harvest. They don't store it up in barns. They don't store it up in storehouses. Again, that's an allusion also to the previous text. Amen. So in other words, ravens eat for the day, not worrying about if their meal is going to come tomorrow because there's something about the raven that they know that whatever, the same God that provided today will provide tomorrow. He says, so therefore, uh, they just fly around <laughs> and enjoy the days that God gives them. Amen. He says, look at them. God feeds them. Amen. He says, uh, 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 of how much more value are you than the birds? Amen. Or then he goes on later, he said, and look at the lilies of the field. Amen. Look at how God clothed them with such beauty. Amen. God does that for them. Amen. So he says, why worry? Because worry distracts you, but not only does worry distract you, you don't want to worry because worry causes Doubt within you, amen. Because when you doubt, amen, when you worry, you become consumed with worry. That means that you become tormented, you gain anxiety, you stress out over several things. Really, when it comes down to it, when you are worried, amen, uh, you, 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 you are really, you're really doubting, amen, that God will take care of you. Uh, that, that, that's what he's insinuating here. He says, uh, consider the ravens. Amen. Uh, they don't sow. They don't reap a harvest. They don't have barns to store up. Uh, they don't store up their food. But God feeds them. Of uh, How much more value are you to God than the birds? The word worry again, backing up again to verse number 20, the word worry in the text, not only does it mean to divide, but it divides, amen, by causing doubt. Amen. It distracts as well as causes doubt. He says you doubt when you begin to worry about your life. Amen. You are saying you doubt that 
God will take care of you. He says, the ravens, amen, praise the Lord, amen. Uh, they, they, they know that God will provide for them or look at how God provides for them. They don't have knowledge like we have knowledge, but he says, but they, they're animals and God takes care of the birds or the air. Look, if God takes care of the raven, what makes you think God won't take care of you? And the insinuation of God caring for you is wrapped up in the word value in verse number 24 when you dig into the word value in verse number 24 uh, it, it means it, it means it means to carry from one spot to the other uh, it means to take beyond a point amen uh, and, 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 and and because it had that that literal meaning it figuratively uh, and tied to the spiritual world it's the idea of of, 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 of God uh, taking us from one location or God carrying us from one location to the other because of how much we are worth to God amen uh, it's the idea that because something is of a distinct different value and because of its distinction amen because of its difference that's what makes it more valuable and so because of its difference it is carried from one place to the other because of its worth it is carried from one place to the other because of its value it's picked up Amen. And taken beyond to uh, greater places. He says, look at you. Compare yourself to the birds. If God cares enough to take care of birds who are not created in his image, what makes you think that God won't take care of you? And you are different than birds because you are made like God. You are the imago Dei. You are the image of God. And God takes care of that which belongs to him. He says, when you, when you worry you doubt God's care for you don't you know that if God gave you life God will take care of your life he said don't you know God cares for you because you are valued by God he said and none does it cause you to doubt God's care about you but it makes you doubt you amen it makes you doubt your value no my brother and my sister you are worth more to God than what you may think you are and the reason why I know is that because God keeps taking care of you amen and now that God keeps taking care of you God has provided a savior for you amen has saved you who he sent that you you might have life and have life more abundantly. Don't doubt your value and your worth. You are more valuable to God than what you really think you are. Worrying causes you to doubt that God will take care of you. Doubt, worry causes you to doubt that God cares for you. Amen. That's wrapped up also in this idea of making the comparison with the birds and even with uh, the lilies of the field. He says, look, 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 look how God takes care of those objects that cannot, has not been given the assignment that you've been given as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Uh, you, you that is loved by God. Amen. Given life by God. God will take care of of you. God does care about you. Amen. I like this analogy between the, the, the birds as well as the flowers because part of the idea that's communicated in the Psalms and in the Proverbs is that God, uh, you know God uh, is able to do it because God has been doing it because it's part of what God has provided by way of the circle of life. Amen. So when God is preaching with God taking care of the ravens, it's also saying that God takes care of their young too. Amen. So the, ra the ravens and their young get food and the, and, 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 and the lilies of the valley. Amen. Uh, they, they are continuously growing how do they grow they don't provide their own water how do they grow they don't provide their own sun uh, they grow because God the creator of the sun provides sun to make them grow God the creator of uh, the sin of rain is the one that sends rains that causes the grass of the field to grow they don't grow on their own they grow because of the hand of God that ministers to them and why because God cares for his creation 
Somebody this morning needs to hear that. I don't know the reason why the Lord has brought me back to this particular, brought me to this particular text on the day. Amen. It was in our Sunday school lesson on yesterday from Matthew chapter number six. Amen. Our Bible study lesson has been on over the last six weeks. Amen. Of a somebody you need to, you need to know this morning that God cares for you. Worrying distracts you. Not only does worry distract you, but worry causes doubt within you. But if you're not careful, worry can destroy you. Get out of here today, amen, number one. Uh, worry doesn't work because worry distracts you. Causes you to misplace your priorities. Causes you to miss out on hearing from God and hearing and dialoguing and engaging in the word of God. Where it does not work because it causes you not to become rich toward God. It can cause you to lose favor with God. And I don't know about you, but the last person that I want to lose favor with today is the God, my Lord. Amen. If I want to be on anybody's side and I need anybody's favor, I don't know about you, but I need the favor of the Lord. I want to do all that I can to be in the will of God and to walk in his ways. So where it does not work for a disciple because where it will distract you, where it will also cause doubt to arise within you. The more you, the more you seek, the more you do more, the, the more worried you become about your situation, about how things are going to turn out, it causes you to have some negative thoughts about who God is. It causes you to have some distorted thoughts about your situation as it relates to God. Uh, I want to tell you today uh, uh, that you don't have to worry. Uh, you can trust God uh, because God will take care of you. Uh, God will supply what it is that you need. I need to make that distinction there. God may not supply what you want, amen, but God will supply what it is that you need, amen. And some of us are worried today uh, because we're more consumed and concerned for wants than we are for needs. Uh, yeah, when you become more concerned about the kind of food you're eating more so than uh, the mere fact that God has put food on your table, uh, you, are, you are worried about the wrong thing. Uh, you want to trust God uh, because God knows uh, how to take care of his creation uh. but last but not least I think I ought to tell you uh, that if you keep on worrying uh, and you keep on uh, stressing out uh, worry can uh, destroy you uh, yes it can uh, because our English word uh, uh, for the word worry in the text yeah in verse number 22 uh, it comes from uh, an old English word which means to strangle yeah uh yes that's what it means to wear it means to strangle it means uh to choke the life out of uh, that which is being strangled uh, and i want to tell you today uh, if you're not careful uh your worry can uh, choke the life out of your relationships uh, if you're not careful today uh worry can drain uh, your enjoyment of life uh, if you're not careful today uh worry can strangle uh, your relationship with God uh, if you're not careful today uh, worry can strain you and, and, and strangle you mentally uh, worry can cause you uh, to wind up in a deep dark place uh, but I got good news today uh, you can uh, destroy your worry uh, before your worry destroys you uh, it's right here in the tanks uh, can I tell you uh, how to deal with your worry. Uh, verse number 24 uh, and verse number 27 uh, both start with the English word consider. Uh, and the word consider means uh, sit down uh, and do some reflecting. Uh, and he tells us uh, what to reflect on. Uh, reflect on uh, who God is. Uh, and every now and then uh, you have to sit down uh, and refocus your attention. Uh, realign your vision uh, because when you see your problem uh, and see it bigger than God uh, you need to do some reflecting uh, realizing that
that there's nothing uh, too hard for God uh, and there is nothing uh, bigger than the God we serve. Uh, have I got a witness out there? Uh, every now and then uh, you got to remind yourself uh, of who your God is. Uh, he is the God uh, that sits high. Uh, he is the God uh, that looks down low. Uh, he is the God uh, that's been making ways for you. Uh, he says look here. Uh, look how God uh, has been taking care of things. Uh, look at how God uh, does some things. Uh, look at how uh, God has been there. Uh, and I don't know about you uh, but every now and then uh, I do get a little stressed. Uh, but when those moments come uh, I sit down uh, and I think things over. Uh, and as I think y'all uh, and as I reflect y'all uh, I get the thinking about uh, how the Lord uh, has made a way uh, time and time again. Uh, anybody glad today? Uh, look at what God does. Uh, God provides uh, resources for his children. Uh, that's what he does for the ravens and the lilies. Uh, he provides resources uh, to help them to grow. Uh, I want to drop this nugget on you. Uh, God provides uh, resources for his children. Uh, and if your worry uh, gets too much for you, uh, God has uh, provided divine resources. Uh, you can go and talk to somebody. Uh, talk to a counselor. Uh, talk to those resources that God has put in the earth uh, to help you get over life's troubles. Uh, I want to tell you today, uh, there's nothing wrong uh, with sitting down uh, and having a talk with somebody that can help you refocus and realign your vision. Uh, that's part of God's resources. Uh, anybody glad today? Uh, God has provided uh, all kinds of resources. Uh, why has God did that? Uh, because God loves us so much uh, that he sent Jesus uh, that we might have life uh, and have life more abundantly. Uh, and when he sent Jesus uh, after Jesus died on the cross uh, for our sins uh, after they buried him uh, in a borrowed tomb uh, after he got up out the grave uh, with all power uh, in his hand uh, he declared uh, I'm sending the Holy Ghost uh, and he will equip folk uh, to do the work of the Lord uh, and last time I checked uh, one of the spiritual gifts out there uh, is the gift of healing uh, and let me tell you y'all uh, there in the word of God uh, when it talks about the gift of healing uh, it's therapeutic uh, in the Greek children uh, which means therapy uh, in our English vernacular in other words uh, God has uh, provided all measures of therapy out there uh, trust God uh, lean and depend on him and God will uh, God will take care of you if you know I'm right today why don't you wave your hands praise the Lord where it doesn't work for us but what will work tell Jesus all about your troubles and watch what the Lord will do anybody glad today just a little talk with Jesus just a little talk with him I said just a little talk with him make everything alright say yes today if you know I'm right today why don't you just say yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I know he's alright yeah uh, give it over to the Lord he will make everything alright <laughs> have I got a witness today Come on, praise team. The law will. <laughs> ah, yes. Come give your life to Jesus. Come give it to Jesus right now. Give it over to him. He will take care of you. I promise you he will. He's a keeper of his word. Trust him. Seek him and watch what he'll do by way of favor in your life. Come give your life to Jesus. 859 230 
I'm sorry, 859-252-78-7191. There's somebody here, 252-7191. There's somebody here, reach out to us via Instant Messenger or contact us via our website. F-A-B-C-L-E-X-L-O-R-G. Come give your life to him today or maybe reconnect with him today. Whatever, whatever you need to do to reposition yourself with Jesus because you're trying to handle it all by yourself. You don't have to. He will, he will order your steps in his word. He will comfort you with his word. His, his word will be a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. He helps you in the short term with long term vision in mind. Come give your life to Jesus today. Watch what he will do. He can you might have life and have life more abundantly. Come on.
Amen. We thank God for how God has blessed here on today. We thank God for all of you here on today. Amen. Again, to God be the glory. We want to remind you again, the fit and faithful. Amen. Get registered for that. Sign up for that. You may call the church office to check our Facebook page or website. And we can find more information there. Amen. Uh, so again, fit and faithful. And also uh, remember our uh, show up for justice. Uh, show up for uh, saying no more, no knock warrants in Lexington, uh, 10 o'clock a.m. at Main Street Baptist Church. Join us the Black Faith Leaders. And then at 3 p.m. outside at Shiloh Baptist Church for our uh, City Council watch party as we prepare to take that uh, very procedural vote on no knock, no, no, the discontinued permanent ban, the discontinued use and permanent ban on no knock warrants. Again, as I said today, we're launching FABC LEX online. Amen. That is our Facebook group that we have set up with you in mind. Uh, we have set it up, amen, for the purpose of building spiritual and healthy relationships and helping us to uh, increase and enhance our discipleship making process, amen, our way of impacting you, connecting you with others and helping you to build your relationship with others and with God, amen. So that is our digital uh, crisis, a digital environment that we're inviting all of our members and friends that's part of our uh, weekend live service to join that group. Let me tell you how to join it, amen. You may go out to Facebook, amen, search F-A-B-C-L-E-X space online, all right? F-A-B-C-L-E-X space online, amen. And when you find that, amen, uh, select it, click join, amen, and then we would get th two or three questions there, and we get you hooked right up into that group. Amen. We will be engaging you on a daily basis with that group uh, every day at 7 a.m. Amen. Get you to dialogue and, to, and engage in the Word of God with a question of the day. Amen. And then at 12 p.m., there'll be a focus, and then also so we'll be convening with you live at 7 p.m. So 7 a.m., 12 p.m., and 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and then 7 a.m. Amen. On Fridays. Amen. We'll be doing stuff like Deeper Dive Monday. Amen. So you join the group. Amen. At 12 o'clock, we invite you to share questions from today's sermon. Amen. Those things where you may want to take a deeper dive in, we invite you to share those questions and I will join you at 7 uh, p.m. live. Amen. To discuss those, discuss those questions go deeper uh, in discussion with you. So we have Deeper Dive Monday. We have Transformation Tuesday. We invite you to engage uh, in the study of God's Word as part of our Bible study time. Amen. Amen. Then we have also uh, FABC friends, um, members and friends in prayer, FIP Wednesday. Amen. And we also have topic discussion Thursday. Amen. So we invite you. Please join the group. We'll be there every day. Amen. Helping you to grow with you. Helping you may also help us to grow as well. God bless you. We love you. We'll be looking forward. To, I'll be looking to see you this afternoon. Amen. I'll be checking, be checking. Amen. Again, join us. Amen. And our new group. Amen. FABC. L-E-X online. F-A-B-C L-E-X space online. Look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. God keep you. Receive our benediction for the day. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest, rule, and abide with all of you henceforth, now, and forever. And let all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. Again, we love you, and God loves you too. And again, come join us at FABC LEX Space Online. God bless. Have a blessed rest of the week.